What do you believe about the end of the world? There's a simple question, huh? <laughs> the judgment day, the end times, the last day. I have this guy from my church who maybe every month or two forwards me an email or sends me a text with a link and it's about something crazy happening in the world, something cultural, something that feels very unchristian. And he always wonders, is this the end? Like, have things gotten so bad that the moment has arrived and the world is about to wrap up? And to be honest with you, I'm, I'm sometimes tempted to, you know, make light of, of his fear. But did you know in the Bible, actually in the New Testament, nearly every single book that makes up the New Testament mentions the end of the world? In the teachings of Jesus and the gospel, Peter, Paul, James, one of the biggest threads besides the gospel of Jesus Christ is the fact that the world will not just keep going, it will one day end. And so it's not a strange question to ask you, what, what do you personally believe about the end of the world? What are your spiritual convictions about when it will end or how it will end or what exactly will happen when that day comes or if that day is going to come and where will you stand when that day comes? Well, those are the kind of questions I want to answer with you uh, today and in the next few videos. And it's really interesting to me that Jesus' friend Peter, when he wrote two letters in the New Testament, 1st and 2nd Peter, even though they're very short letters, he spent one entire chapter trying to answer questions about the end of the world. Uh, in my Bible, the title is The Day of the Lord. So in 2nd Peter, chapter 3, uh, I just want to walk you through verse by verse and see what we can learn about the return of Jesus Christ from the words of one of Jesus' closest friends. So, this is how the chapter begins. 2 Peter chapter 3 says, Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. This is 2 Peter, right? Not first. I've written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. So, there's the big goal, right? Old Testament prophets, New Testament apostles speaking, having heard from Jesus, <laughs> the goal is to stimulate you to wholesome thinking, not get your thoughts wrapped up in bad, unbiblical places. And here's what he says next, verse 3. Above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where's this coming, he promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But, but they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also, the world at that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Whoa. All right, P Peter, he's on blast, right? He says, above all, you need to know this. C Christians, you must understand this. And what does he want us to understand? That tons of people won't buy this. You must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come. Not just people who are unsure or those who have questions, but scoffing, mocking, jabbing, making memes about it. Oh, yeah, 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 the end of the world, right? That's what grandpa said, that's what great-grandpa said, that's what these Christians have always been saying, but nothing happens. Everything just keeps going on. Have you noticed that? It seems that many people in our culture are convinced that the world could end because of a global pandemic or nuclear war or climate change or an asteroid or a zombie apocalypse or, the, the, you know, they will believe some pretty out there things, but many people will not believe the simple fact that one day Jesus Christ himself will appear in the air, the world will end, and all of humanity will be judged. And so Peter wants you to know this, but before the tide of culture pulls you away to think that the judgment day is just something foolish, it's just something those extreme Christians do, Peter, who walked with Christ himself, says you must understand this, He's coming back. 
Just like God promised in his word that the flood would come, and it did, Jesus has promised in his word that the end will come, and it will. Friends, you are not weird, and you are not crazy to believe in a judgment day. Let me leave you with this. Um, Did you know that some of the earliest Christians, when they tried to figure out exactly what Christianity was about, they came up with a creed. Uh, If you've gone to church for a while, you might have heard of it, the Apostles' Creed. It wasn't written by the apostles themselves, it was written by those who followed them, very early, maybe 2nd century, 100s AD. And in that creed, they said, you know, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. And they talked about he was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, was buried. They talk about the, the gospel and what Jesus did for us. He ascended into heaven. He sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And from there, he will come to do what? To judge the living and the dead. So take your stand with the earliest Christians. Don't be embarrassed of what believers have stood for for the longest time. Yes, you must understand that scoffers will come, but Jesus is coming back. Believe him. The good news is on the way. One day Jesus will appear and we will celebrate like never before. He promised it. I pray you believe it. Amen. Did you enjoy this video? Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube so you don't miss a single message. Click right here.